Hey guys, it's John from the Busycast. Some of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen that I've been putting together a Necron army lately over the last few months. If you don't follow me on Instagram, if you go to at Busycast and give us a follow, that'd be great. However, I thought before I finish this Necron army, because I'm really close and there's a battle report coming on that soon, before I finish it, I was going to give you an overview of my airbrush setup. So I've looked for people's airbrush setups in the past. When I was trying to set up my own airbrush, like trying to use that, I wanted to figure out what other people were using so I know all the elements I need in terms of equipment. And then I also wanted to know how to use the airbrush, how to clean it, all those little things that people sometimes don't mention. So I thought before I finish, I'll give you guys an overview of A, my setup and B, how it works. And hopefully that'll really help you guys out if you're looking to invest in an airbrush or if you already use one and you just want to know what someone else is doing. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. So to start with, we have an air compressor. This is the Pash D3000R air compressor. On this compressor, you have a power cable here, which obviously you just plug in. Uh, you also have uh, air release there, so you can release the tank. Uh, you have the ability to control pressure here. So if you turn this knob and then set it down and lock it, that will increase the amount of pressure that comes through the airbrush when you're using the airbrush. Usually you want to stay at about 30 PSI. That sort of the sweet spot for using an airbrush with miniatures, although depending on the effect, you might want to drop or increase that. If you increase it, then obviously there'll be more air pressure coming out of the airbrush when you use it. So when you use, spray the paint, it might bleed a bit more. Whereas if it's lower, it won't carry as well. So 30 is about the sweet spot. And then in this bit here, we have a cable, uh, which uh, sort of a hose, which links to the airbrush. So just screws on like that. To turn the airbrush on and on, there is a button this side. There are two options. There's a one bar option, which turns the airbrush on and once the um, compressor is full, it will cut out and it'll only kick back in once there, um, it needs to add more air. And then there's a second option, which means it will constantly run. These things can get quite hot, so you don't want to use them constantly. You want to take a lot of breaks because if they get really hot, they'll just cut out and won't work until they cool down again. So I'd advise using the option where it's not constantly on because then you'll be able to use it for slightly longer. That is the compressor setup. You need a compressor to use an airbrush, basically. It's a key part of the, um, of the setup. Now here's the rest of the setup. So you've got your compressor, then you need, obviously, your airbrush. This is a, a, an Iwata Eclipse HP CS uh, airbrush, it's quite a good airbrush. Uh, what you do is the hose that was connected to the compressor, there's another end, slightly different um, uh, adapter, and then that just screws on. Once that's screwed on and that and the compressor's turned on, that'll give you air to push to pump through the uh, through the airbrush. So once it's screwed in, uh, you would put in your paint here and then to activate the airbrush you press down to release the, um, the air through the airbrush and then you pull back to move the needle so the way an airbrush works you've got to be very careful with an airbrush because uh, the way an airbrush works is there's a tiny little needle here and by pulling this uh, control back here it allows more paint through so the mixture of pumping air through the airbrush and pulling the needle back is what allows air to part is what allows the paint to pass through uh, the only problem with this is the needle is extremely delicate so whenever you clean the airbrush or do anything with it you have to be very careful not to bend the needle if you bend this needle you pretty much screwed up your airbrush and you have to either get a new needle or a new airbrush so whenever i'm screwing on this little guard here i always pull it back into the airbrush so i can't damage it in any way shape or form so that's your airbrush in addition to your airbrush you need a few more things so as you can see here I've got a mask so I got this off eBay I think uh, I've bought them from B&Q in the past basically because using an airbrush there's a lot of fumes that are gonna be in the air and you don't want to be inhaling them because it's not good for your health so you should be wearing a, um, a mask 
Also, you should do, uh, whenever you're using your airbrush, you should be in a well ventilated area. So, I mean, I'm only doing it in my room, but uh, you should have all the windows open as an example, so there's a lot of ventilation, because you don't want to be inhaling too many of those fumes. In addition to that, I've got a little dispenser for water. So when I've finished with the airbrush, when I've finished painting something, I'll just run some water through it to clean it first of all and then when uh, the we, uh, airbrush starts pumping out clear water I'll use airbrush cleaner um, you can get this I bought this off eBay um, and this is a solution which will basically clean out your airbrush it does a really really good job but it's quite expensive so you don't want to be plowing through it which is why I use water first to do a majority of the cleaning and then airbrush cleaner to do the rest now cleaning your airbrush is really really important uh, so I also have these little so brushes and these can be used to clean the airbrush again. I think this was eBay. So uh, not very expensive, it was something like two or three quid, but you can use that to uh, clean your airbrush because it's obviously quite difficult to get in there. I have an old brush here to help me mix up paints uh, once they're in the airbrush with some thinner medium. And I have a larger brush just to clean out any excess paint in the holder up here because you want to keep it clean. In addition to that, we have this thing here. This is also for cleaning your airbrush and also once you've finished airbrushing something, you can put it just like this and it will sit like that. So you've got somewhere to keep your airbrush so it doesn't get damaged in any way, shape or form when you're using it. Also, when you're using this cleaner medium, you don't want to pump it through the airbrush just into the air, into the air because it's quite toxic. So you use this as a filter on top, it means all of this medium goes into here, this filters it out so you're not inhaling any dangerous uh, fumes. So that has a dual purpose of cleaning and holding your airbrush, again really cheap off eBay. Then we have our paints, so these are all Vallejo model air paints. The reason they're air paints as opposed to another paint is they're thinned down, so when you're using an airbrush you need your paint to be a lot thinner because it's got to pass through that tiny needle point that I showed you earlier. So air paints are already thinned down. You can use paints that aren't air paints, such as this model color here, but you want to thin it down. I use thinner medium, but you could use water instead. GW have just released a range of uh, air paints, so you could use those if you wanted to. I haven't used them myself, but Citadel paints and the Citadel range have been improving dramatically over the last few years. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were really good and they would start to take over and you'd see them in more videos. Uh, I then have an old Pepsi Max bottle and basically that is for running water through. So once I've finished with all the paint in the airbrush, I'll filter some water through it and spray it through into this, um, which is why it's sort of a mucky ick color. Um, but yeah, that's sort of, sort of to help me clean out the airbrush. And then I thought I'd include this. This is obviously GW, it's just primer. You can use your airbrush to prime models. However, I find that the priming mediums are a lot thinner and they don't tend to give as good a base they tend to chip a little bit more so even though I've got an airbrush I'd still use GW primer that's my own personal preference just because I think that it um, it creates a really good base layer uh, the reason it's Andrew dust as opposed to another color is this is for my Necron army which is all bone colored so instead of um, starting with a black base or a white grey base, I decided I'd just go straight into having sort of a sandy coloured base to cover up any mistakes I was going to make with the deepest darkest recesses are already base coloured in a similar colour, it sort of hides your mistakes if you make any. So that is pretty much the airbrush setup I've got, I've also got some plastic underneath it because I'm doing it in, um, in uh, just a generic room as opposed to a garage. If there's any spillage I want to catch it so I put a bit of plastic down so there isn't any damage to the carpet or anything but that's pretty much all you need for an airbrush setup. I'll run you through some of the techniques I'm using in the next video which is where I talk about my um, uh, my Necron army and how I painted them uh, using a bone coloured scheme. So I hope that helped. If you guys have any questions just ask in the comments. One more thing I forgot to mention, latex gloves. So because you're going to be holding things while you, while you airbrush them hands can get covered with paint, use latex gloves, they won't. So that's a really good way to approach things. Also in the past, when I've been airbrushing models, you can get a little piece of cork and then um, put in a paper clip and then screw that in so you've got something to hold the model with. I'm in a rush, so I'm not doing things properly. You should do that, 
but I'm just going to hold the model. I'm not really that fast because I'm going to be going over it later, the bit I'm holding with a different colour. So, yeah. So that's it. That's an overview of the airbrush setup I use. I hope that was, was useful. I'm not a, a massive painter. I'm more of a, I enjoy playing the game as opposed to painting, but I hate playing without painted models. I kind of have to have painted models because it just makes the whole thing look and feel more epic. So airbrushing is a way to get an army painted quite quickly, but at the same time, it looks quite cool. So it's a nice little balance between a bit of speed and still maintaining that quality. Uh, I won't be doing painting videos regularly, but I thought this would hopefully help some of you guys out. If you do want to see specific things though, just put it in the comments. If you can also subscribe, that is really helpful. Uh, just seeing people subscribing is incredibly uh, reassuring and it's like, wow, you guys are, are really enjoying the content I'm putting out there. So let me know what you guys want to see because I always appreciate the comments and what you guys have to say. Anyway, cheers. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've just watched back some playbacks, I wanted to check everything it recorded properly and I realised in the top left hand corner of the screen up there there's something that looks a little bit dodgy and I wanted to show you guys what it was so that there was no, you know, so... It's a glue gun, right? It's nothing dodgy, it's just a glue gun. No, you know.